And, well, that's how we look like. We thought it's maybe little nice uh, black and white sketchy pictures of our faces. Let's try if the laser pointer is working, because the laser pointer is a really, really important device today. Ah, oh no. Oh no, look at that. Ah, that's bad. Whatever. Uh, because you're trendy people out there, uh, I think it's better to show you our really trendy press picture. Okay? Well, well, well. And uh, we are from Austria, a small little country in the middle, in the heart of Europe. And what could describe Austrian hackers and geeks better than a schnitzel with a Pac-Man in it? Okay? <laughs> You have uh, probably realized that I have a strange, um, you know, like pronunciation thing going on, a strange accent. That's because my native language is German, or actually Austrian German. And Austrian German is a standard variety of German. And uh, a member of our group, Günther, uh, he had a problem a couple of uh, months ago. He went to a cheesecake factory. And we were sitting there, and we would try to order. And Günther actually, like the waitress, uh, was approaching and asked Günther, hey, uh, what do we want to drink? And Günther said, um, large cock. <laughs> and she was, what? And he said, oh, no, 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 I'll change that. Diet cock. <laughs> that happens, OK? If I should have any problems like Günther concerning cocks and cokes and whatever, please say, you're wrong, you're wrong, and I'll try to fix that. Good. What is Monochrome doing? Uh, we, uh, hmm, we have a couple of projects I'd like to present you. First of all, we started in 1993, a long time ago, and we started as a fanzine. In the meantime, the fanzine is more like a yearbook. It's 500 pages thick. And uh, we are still collecting cool and important information. I think it's comparable to the user interface of Iron Feather Journal, if you remember Iron Feather Journal, OK? So uh, and we're still collecting stuff for the new issue. It will be in the, in the wonderful English language, the lingua franca of modern capitalism. Uh, so if you want to write something for us, please, please submit it. We uh, created one of the first uh, social um, interaction robot projects in the mid-1990s called the uh, Exot in our small uh, flat in Vienna. We are doing t-shirts, kind of esoteric, you know, but I mean, we somehow have to pay our bills. We did a musical about bank software. Uh, maybe not so interesting for you. Uh, we are collecting typos. We are big, big collectors. And I like my typos. What the duck? <laughs> border feces. I mean, that happens, you know, like in, uh, in Mexico, you know, the border feces. Uh, the theme arc, the perma ink, the congratulinos, that's a really nice particle. Uh, uh, yeah. The merciful goofness of the Lord. I mean, it happens. Uh, I mean, Israel. Uh, and of course, I'm sitting in a time slot, of course. And in. <laughs> Whatever, the landline, the python, the python, gold tits. And you, of course, are a lice audience. Yay. Yay. OK. So we collect lots of stuff. If you have typos, email was uh, just created for creating typos. So send us your typos. We also collect bad restaurant art and lots and lots of different things. We also collect, uh, and now I go back to office spaces and cubicles, we collect office art. So what's office art? Office art. Uh, applied office art is the stuff that you do when you're bored in your office. You start to scribble around on your paper and, and you make drawings. And we collect those drawings because we think that's the really, really important art of late capitalism. People are bored in office cubicles and they produce art. And my f most famous piece of applied office art is this one. <laughs> I mean, that's almost cubist, I guess. Uh, hmm. <laughs> So, we created the Great Firewall of China at the Google campus. Uh, you see, it's really bad. It's a big matchstick and Chinese hats and stuff. It's a really, really bad installation, but we had to get the point around, like, uh, across for North Americans, you know? They had to get it. Uh, so, it's a pretty low-key low political statement, but whatever. They didn't taser us, and we didn't know why we could actually set up the crap there, and they didn't bother us. There was security around, and it didn't like taser us or arrest us, whatever. And I found out because, and we didn't know that, it was the day of 
the big shareholder meeting, and it didn't want any bad press, and that somehow <laughs> rescued us. Uh, we did the first overhead cum shot in the history of mankind. <laughs> because, you know, the overhead projector is a dying medium, and the only way to, to, to really, you know, like to save the dying medium is to prove its pornographic possibilities. <laughs> You can find that on YouPorn, we have a 3.84 rating out of five. It's not bad. I mean, there are people out there with strange fetishes, you know. Okay. We did uh, a computer game where we're still doing a trilogy of computer games called Soviet Unterzugersdorf. You might not know that, but there is the last existing Soviet Republic. It's within the borders of Austria. It's like Schengen outer border. And uh, we thought it's a good way to take a completely obsolete form of computer gaming, the adventure game, and mix it up with this interesting, still existing Stalinist country. And uh, it's out there, you can download it uh, for all different platforms and, of course, play it. We created the first uh, must, a massive multiplayer thumb wrestling. And if you're, we have a couple of like nodal structures, network topologies, token ring network, stuff like that. So if you're into thumb wrestling with 500 other people, we could do that tomorrow. Is anyone interested in doing massive multiplayer thumb wrestling tomorrow? Mm. Perfect. I think we should meet tomorrow. Let's say, let's say five o'clock in the hallway, okay? If you're interested. Oh, maybe six, whatever. We'll do it. Uh, we, together with a group called Shifts uh, in Vienna, uh, are doing Robo Exotica. And Robo Exotica is the first and therefore leading festival concerned with cocktail robotics. So if you want to create robots that mix cocktails, serve cocktails, drink cocktails, have bar conversations, Turing, uh, and, or, or light cigarettes or smoke cigarettes, you should come to Vienna, or actually you should apply, and we try to fly over to Vienna because the Austrian government is paying for that. Uh, so, sometimes we make small appearances of Robo Exotica robots in San Francisco, but if you like that. I mean, that's what media art should be all about. I mean, most of the time at media art festivals, you hear, is, you hear interesting talks, and then you get drunk. At Robo Exotica, you can get, can get drunk all the time. That's really perfect. We bury people alive for 15 minutes if they wish to. It's for Americans. They, Americans like experiences, dining experiences, whatever experiences, Disney experiences. And we had the experience to experience be, uh, of premature burial. So if uh, we'll do that again, it's really, really cool for goth kids, but they are always chickening out. <laughs> we never ever buried a single goth kid. They chicken out. Don't know why. Uh, we are doing Ars Electronica, or Ars Electronica, uh, in San Francisco. Next time in September, it's the festival for uh, sex and technology. And the next topic, the next theme will be sex and science fiction. So if you're into sex and science fiction, if you want to create fucking machines like this piece here, or teledildonic devices, or orgasmotrons, you should send us an email. That's actually Foxilla. And Foxilla was created by the guy who created Johnny Five. That's why it looks like Johnny Five. <laughs> Just like Johnny Five got older, I guess. He has a licking chainsaw and a giant dildo. Uh, if you're interested in that, that's cool too. We created the first uh, Nazi petting zoo. <laughs> because you know Austria. Austria. You know, like most of the Austrians are very comfortable with, you see, hey, we were the first victims of Nazi Germany, but haha, 99.75% said yes to Greater Germany. And we wanted to stage that in a shopping street in Vienna, Austria. Finally, after 70 years, Austrians can really say what they want to do. They can hug the Nazi, they can embrace history. And actually, a couple of Austrians did that. So we have a couple of really cool, uh, episodes of the uh, Streichel Nazi, the petting Nazi on Boeing Boeing television if you want to see it. So we're doing uh, CDs and books, but I don't want to bore you uh, any longer because today we want to talk about the innermost unifier. Buck. The innermost unifier. And first I have to start by showing you a short film. And 
talk about the Google campus first. So what's the Google campus? Who knows the Google campus? Anyone been there already? Like, hey, oh, it's fine. OK. So the Google, ca Google campus in Mountain View, California, is a nice place where the Google employees are and work. And I mean, they have whirlpools, and they have free smoothies, and they have the great excellent food there. I mean, I had a steak there. I mean, the cow had a great health plan, I tell you. Uh, uh, they get whatever they wish. They get whatever they wish. Still, I have a really, really strange feeling, because something about the Google campus is uncanny. And I was there, and I tell you what it is. It looks like Logan's Run. <laughs> That's the problem, yeah? You have the strange feeling that, like, within the next five minutes, they bring all the people, the, all the young, young programmers, to the carousel and burn them there. And actually, in fact, that happens. After like two or three years, years working there, and they are not capable enough, they throw them out, and they have to work for Mozilla or <laughs> something else. I don't know. So, uh, and that's what I want to talk to you today. I want to talk about corporate culture and how it works, and especially about the motivational infrastructure, I call it, of corporate culture. So first, I have to switch to an external video file. Yeah, OK? <laughs> Uh, and I'm pressing escape now, and you'll see, oh my god, he's using Windows! Oh no, how could he? I tell you what, Microsoft at least is honest about that they're greedy bastards. <laughs> Apple users and Apple producers, they are cultists. They freak me out, okay? And I'm too stupid for Linux, uh, that's why I use Windows. Okay, so I'm switching to this nice little video file uh, with a couple of friends of mine. Uh, turn on the sound, please. Let's make it happen. Near. Bar! Near. Hello, Kiki. Ah, hey, Boo Boo. How are you today? I'm so sad. My daddy is acting so strange lately. He's always working. He has no time. Do you know what happened? I don't know, but I know how we can find out. Let's Google together. Well, Boo Boo? The Google says new economy and neoliberalism emerged, and that's what's troubling your daddy. What is that? New economy and neoliberalism denote a new relationship between the employer and the employee. Before the new economy, labor was conceived as it was ever since classic capitalism of the 18th century. You mean, uh, a capitalism of production and goods? One that creates wealth exclusively through the production and sale of hard objects? Yes. The typical worker can be found in a proto-capitalist factory, and his work is defined by the plant. He sells his manpower, and is therefore the direct opposite of the factory owner, who is the buyer of the worker's labor. Didn't Mr. Karl Marx call this contrast the antagonism? The opposing entities of worker and capitalist? Yes, Boo Boo. The trick of the new economy now is to make the workers believe that they are owners too. Of course, this is not true, because they're still without executive power. However, there is a shift of control away from the bosses, whose job it was to monitor and motivate the workers. Control is shifted to the workers themselves, who are tricked into thinking that their interests are the same as their capitalist masters. Isn't this change called a shift from a disciplinary society towards a society of control? But what does that mean, Kiki? Good question, Google. Let's ask Google again. Disciplinary societies manage to keep its subordinates where they are by implementing control and punishment. Like my mommy and daddy when they tell me what to do? Yes. Or like your future corporate overlords. But control and punishment can't stifle an individual's inner resistance. And there are always ways of avoiding, if not hacking, these mechanisms of control. Like what? Like long trips to the toilet, theft of work materials, sick leaves, pretending to look busy, plain dumb. So what changed with new economy and neo turns into a model for society as a whole? Ah, internet access, online porn. Not again, the online porn monster. Online porn, online porn, online, online porn, on, on, get away! Online porn, yeah, on, online porn, on, online porn, on, online porn. Keep the stupid oh. thing, it's only one, one, two anyway. <laughs> yeah, okay, but now, 
Do you understand why your daddy works so much lately, Boo Boo? Yes, Kiki, but what can we do? Let's be nostalgic if we may. Let us see ourselves as workers, if only to remember who really controls the means of production. That is true, Kiki. I will go and tell my dad he should feel as a worker. Bye-bye. Online board! Online board! Online board! Online board! Online board. Uh, uh, yeah, oh yeah, oh, online! Uh, online board! Board! Online! <laughs> well, well, oh, thanks a lot. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I have to close Winamp and go back to the presentation. It worked. Ah. <laughs> we had to find out how we could make a really good puppet show, and of course, Orally already published something about that. Tim Orally, I like him. Um, so, good. We actually have like two more episodes out there, so if you're into Marxist sock puppets, you should check out. Uh, <laughs> two more uh, episodes of Kiki and Boo Boo. And as you have uh, noticed, I guess, uh, monochrome, we are leftists. So we are not into anarcho-capitalism. We're not into libertarianism. We're not into liberalism, OK? Liberalism is a golden shower, I tell you. OK, so, um, so we are leftists. And that's, uh, of course, I have a leftist perspective. Um, Kiki and Boo Boo told you about the shift from the disciplinary society towards society of control. So in short, like an, an abstract could be a company or corporation used to have different forms to control people inside employees in the 19th and early 20th century and in the late 20th century and early 21st century. Uh, in the beginning, there was a clear opposition between workers and the capitalists. And because of this clear opposition, something really, really interesting happened, a whole culture uh, emerged, the so-called workers' culture, the so-called labor culture. There are many, many examples out there how labor culture, workers' culture worked, and especially in the realm of culture. There is also in the United States of America, although there was a hard, hard and harsh anti-union war going on in the early 20th century, there was lots of uh, interesting, cool thing going on. Uh, workers clubs, reading, workers clubs for reading, workers clubs for singing, and they had this really interesting uh, culture of the workers song. So the people in various companies and various factories were actually working together and spending time together and they had a general feeling for solidarity because they knew, hey, there's somebody, somebody trying to fuck with us, okay, and we have to work together. But nowadays, something really, really interesting happens. Nowadays, the solidarity, at least that's what uh, corporations and companies try to do, solidarity should be shut off at the borders of the corporation. So there shouldn't be any solidarity between workers of one corporation and workers of the other corporation. That would be a working class, actually. Yeah? No, 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 no. Nowadays, it works completely different. Nowadays, it's we against them. And because it's we against them, it's we against everybody. So because there is no solidarity between single workers in single companies all over the planet, uh, the capitalists actually try to trick people into believing that they have executive power or some kind of power. So I mean, if I talk about the Google campus, that's exactly happening there. The people at the Google campus, they have whirlpools, they have free smoothies, they get great steaks, they have everything they, would, they, they, that, could, they, that they could want to have. But they are not using this stuff. They are sitting in their cubicles, and I don't know a single guy working at Google who ever went at least five minutes to the stupid whirlpool. Because they just have the feeling of, I could go to the whirlpool. I could go to my boss, who is actually my friend, and talk to him about that I'm not feeling very comfortable. And because I have the feeling of, I could do whatever I like. I have the freedom, I have the choice. Nobody is actually trying to fight for freedom and choice. I mean, freedom is a stupid uh, thing to talk about anyways, because there is a different form of liberal freedom and leftist freedom and right-wing freedom. What's freedom anyways? I'm not talking about freedom. But I'd like to show you a couple of examples uh, of how corporations try to motivate their employees. 
A corporation is more like a tribalistic thing. It's more like a tribe. There's the tribe of IBM, and there's the tribe of Google, and there's the tribe of Intel, or whatever else. And as long as the tribe sticks together and works to, f to, to make the tribe stronger, uh, actually, the employees have a good feeling about their family, their corporate family, and the capitalists have like succeeded in tricking employees and workers, their workers, into believing that if the workers are exploiting themselves, they are actually doing something good for themselves. So there is this exploitation thing is completely twisted nowadays. So and one of the mechanisms to try that is the family, the corporate family. We against them. If like Intel doesn't survive, I mean, we all drown on the big, big wild ocean of capitalism. So we have to make it. We have to row in our little boats. We, we can do it. And what else could you do if you're sitting in a boat and need to motivate the people? You need songs. And of course, these songs are not worker songs. They are not uh, bottom-up songs. They are not songs that were created by workers because they thought, hey, we should work together and help each other. They are created by the corporations themselves. And these songs are called corporate anthems. And I'm collecting corporate anthems for a long, long, long time. Uh, that could be a typical employee in a typical North American IT corporation. And she seems uh, at least shady, I would say. Um, they are doing stuff like that. They are talking about organizational structures and selection of strategies and people and systems. People and systems, how wonderful. In fact, they all look a little bit like that guy. And they feel happy about it. And why does this guy feel happy? Hmm. Nobody really knows. Huh. There's the shady capitalist. And uh, I'd like to uh, go back in history a little bit because I picked a couple of different corporate anthems from different time periods. And I'd like to start with a really typical anthem from the late 1940s. It's the anthem, the, 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 firm, the, the firm company hymn of IBM. Back then, it was clearly uh, a patriarchal thing going on at IBM. So there was a big guy called, who was the founder of IBM? So uh, T.G. T. Watson, yeah, T.G. Watson, yeah. The song actually is singing about T.G. Watson, but uh, it's not singing about T.G. Watson Sr. or T.G. Watson Jr., because he was a junior, of course. Uh, it's singing about this great guy called T.G. Watson. It's actually singing about a whole dynasty of Watsons, okay? And that we should be proud as employees of IBM to work for Mr. Watson, and that we can go on we can go onward and make this corporation better and better and better. It's pretty clear. They are singing up about the big boss. It's a pretty, um, let's call it a pretty early capitalist uh, thing to sing about the boss, OK? Uh, corporate anthems from the 80s don't sing about the boss. They sing about feeling good about being in the company. OK, so uh, I have to plug out. Uh, can you, OK? I have to plug in into this wonderful Kobe CD player. I hope the Kobe CD player uh, works. And please pay close attention in the beginning. The recording is not good. Maybe you could uh, turn the volume on. Uh, it's from 1947. It's called Ever Onward. And it wasn't the only song IBM had. There was a whole IBM songbook, OK? And in the beginning, you can hear, please turn to page five, page five in the songbook. Blah, 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 blah. It's almost like a preacher. It's in fact a little bit, uh, it reminds of the Protestant songbook culture in a little bit. Uh, and that's pretty much working well because, I mean, because of the Protestants, we have capitalism now. Uh, so, okay, I, I would say let's try to listen to it. And if you want to sing, Please, I'm not hindering you. So let's go to the first song, IBM. Good. 
turn to page five. Page five in the songbook. We'll do one verse and two choruses of Ever Onward on page five of the songbook. Two. There's a thrilling star for us that we're about to toast the corporation that we represent. We're here to cheer each pioneer and also proudly boast of the man who met our friend and guiding hand. The name of T.J. Watson means a courage not can stem, and we feel honored to be here to talk to you. First chorus! Ever onward, ever onward, that's the spirit that has brought us fame. We're big, but bigger we will be, we can fail for all to see that to serve humanity has been our aim. Stop it, okay? Um, uh, okay. Uh, I mean, okay. Uh, just one story about IBM. You probably have heard about it already, but I'm anyhow telling you the story. They're singing about that to serve humanity has been our aim in the year 1947 or 1948. That's actually a little bit cynical. Uh, you probably have heard about the Hollerit punch cards. Uh, the Hollerich punch cards were licensed by IBM. IBM bought the Hollerit company, and they licensed the punch cards to Nazi Germany. And actually, Nazi Germany would have, w wouldn't have been able to, uh, to do the concentration camps, to administer the concentration camps without punch card systems. So if IBM thinks about to serve humanity has been our aim in 1947 or 1948, just three years after the war, that's a little bit, let's call it, odd. OK? Um, I'm not sure if anybody's here uh, uh, from IBM, but I think they don't want to hear the story. Uh, they don't like it. My girlfriend, by the way, is working for IBM. Uh. OK, so let's go to uh, the next song. I mean, you heard the song, it's about T.G. Watson. It's about people representing a company. It's about we, the workers, and our boss, and we have to pretty much do what he likes. So it's pretty clear. There's a pretty clear hierarchy, and there's a pretty, pretty clear patriarchal uh, subtext uh, in the song. The next song is from the 1980s, and you'll immediately hear the difference. First of all, the song is a cover version. They just replaced one word in the song by a company name. It's a company from the Netherlands. Any Netherlands, uh, like any, any Dutch companies, for example? Shell, not Shell? Philips. It is Philips, yes. It is Philips. And it's a pretty postmodern, I would call it. Uh, company song because they are not singing about they have to make profit or they have to obey what a great big guy has to do. It's all about feeling. We have to feel good, okay? And actually there's not at all a lot of lyrics in the song. It's just like it's nice and, and poppy and I mean, you like the older people here will recognize the song. Um, I'll play it for you now. And if you have the feeling to dance, then please dance, okay? <laughs> It 
takes so long. It goes on forever, so I have to fill the time. I'm waiting for the climax. Be patient. European, you know, it's, uh, yeah. okay, 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 okay. Concentrate and feel it. You really have to feel it. I mean, you have to try to simulate your feelings. It was my first love, and it will be my last. Philip is my future. They fade it out. The suckers, they fade it out. He doesn't sing it to the end. Stop. Um, I mean, ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I mean, <laughs> oh, sorry, it's so poppy. It's so, it's a pop song, so it can pop. Good. Uh, <laughs> so you saw that. Uh, there's a complete difference between this 1940s song and this 1980s song. Because... But, sorry, just, just to be a, maybe a little bit fair to Philips, I don't know. I don't know um, is, is this like a, a context where there's a party and they made this song for one time use? Or is this uh, something that you would hear all the depends, time? It depends. It depends. Some corporations actually have a corporate anthem and sing the corporate, corporate anthem in the morning. They meet in small groups and sing the song. Some corporations. Uh, especially, I have to, to say, in Japan, it's, yeah. But it happens in the States, it happens in Europe, it happens especially, a couple of corporations uh, have nice, nice corporate anthems in uh, Scandinavia. Um, nobody knows why, because it's like good health system, almost, uh, and nobody knows, I don't know. So it depends, that's why I picked a couple of different songs from different uh, contexts and settings uh, and wanted to present it for you. So the next song is from the Netherlands too. It's actually uh, a meta corporation. It's a corporation doing accounting for other corporations. And that's KPMG, KPMG or whatever they uh, pronounce it. So KPMG um, <laughs> is uh, more like an Olympic anthem. So you really, there are lots of sports metaphors in the song. It's about gold and shining and winning, you'll see. It's a little bit bongo bongo, it's a little bit like 80s kind of ethno. So get into the bongo mode, okay? Um, uh, yeah, let's start it, I'll do a couple of comments later. Come on. That's a slow player. Volume. Okay, okay. Can try it. It's good. Power and energy. We go for the gold. Together we hold on to a vision of global strategy. A team of power and energy. We go for. 
the gold Together we hold Until the end of our strategy We create, we innovate We pass the ones that are late A global dream This is a dream of success that we create We'll be number one with effort and fun Together, each of us can run for gold. That shines like the sun in our eyes. That's serious business. With joy and me. Mm. A team of power and it. You're demotivating me. You have to get into the groove. <laughs> should I play a, like more of the song or should I stop it? Stop it. Stop it. That. That's an American. Stop it. Okay. Should do that about the wars. Okay. Uh, okay. So, one real, my, my most favorite line in the song is identity, one energy, one strategy with sympathy. I mean, that rips your heart out, or? I mean, yeah, it, 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 it sounds North Korean, but it's in fact Dutch. <laughs> Good. Okay. So uh, we have an ongoing maelstrom of songs here, a tour de farce, I call it. Uh, so although it comes across a little bit uh, dated, uh, the KPMG song um, is, uh, it's like a casting show song. It, it sounds actually, uh, to try a nice metaphor, it sounds like the, the anthem of a big, giant Asian sports event played on a kitchen radio, okay? That's my, my feeling I, I, I get when thinking about KPMG and some uh, poor people at KPMG who have to sing that. So it's the, let's call it the late capitalism as the go for the gold of the fittest, the sport metaphor. So, uh, and because uh, I already mentioned there, of course, uh, corporate anthems uh, in the Asian part of the world. I would not go as far as Japan, but I want to present uh, a song from India, okay? Uh, I guess not too many people know Indian companies or corporations, uh, especially not this corporation I'm talking about now, because I think it pretty much collapsed. Uh, it's a corporation called Mindtree, you've heard about it? Mind tree. I think they may still be around, but not in the setting uh, of like this like uh, late 1990s, early 2000s when this song was recorded. Uh, and they pretty much, I guess, collapsed and went bankrupt, whatever. And then they used the name Mind Tree for a different corporation. I don't know. But you'll see why. Because this corporation tries to play uh, the corporate so social responsibility card. So it's almost like the Michael Jackson of corporations, the, the Bob Geldof of, of corporations. You'll, you'll hear that. I mean, uh, I mean you, you, uh, you'll see the lyrics and you'll understand why that can't be from the Western cultural background. Especially, I have to remind you, please read the first two lines of the song, okay? Um, let's start it. That's my tree and that's fucking social responsibility for corporations. Mm. Some help from the special, special children who told us how to fly. I mean, what the duck? Over here in my dream, we started a whole new revolution. We're changing lives, reinventing times with the business and double solutions. Seas for the caring that shows in all we do. Else for the learning light that shines a path through. A's for achieving all we plan. S is for sharing cause we can. S for social responsibility. responsibility. That's the power of, of my dream. My dream. You and me crafting tender technology. 
It's in her blood, imagination, action, joy. Find smiles from around the world, a right here at my tree. Yeah. We have the very best people in the industry. We are aiming for the top 20 of global companies. Making ways right where we are, and we know where we want to be. Epic fail, epic fail. I mean, top 20, top 20 of global companies, bleh. We know where we want to be, maybe, I, I don't know. I mean, um, I remember you, like you're so thrown from the rooftop, we knew we'd reach the sky. I, my, I, 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 I. I mean, that's some like, that's like a, like a pretty like Indian spiritualistic approach, I guess. I'm not into like Hindu and stuff like that, but uh, it's somewhat like, and the special children. I mean, it's probably not uh, the politically correct term to say that, but they had uh, the picture of a spastic child as their corporate logo. I mean, they somehow like overdid it in a certain way. Uh, I mean, the special children and this, it's, uh, there's lots of corporate drivel in it. Lots of, hey, reinventing times, new revolution. It's almost like, you know, it's, it's like Aquarius, you know, like it's the Aquarius revolution and they never uh, reinvented times and they never changed lives, I guess. So, and it's almost lexadaisical, I would call it. It's a lexadaisical uh, approach to corporate anthems. The next song, uh, it's actually it's not a song. It's uh, it's a rap, and um, hmm, uh, it's it's a rap, and it's not a gangster rap. No, it's a financial analyst rap. Okay, um, it's from the UK. It's one of the first uh, corporate anthems. I've pardon? Huh? Mm. So okay. Uh, let's hear the next song. It's by a, a UK company. They uh, failed miserably, so they died too. Uh, and I tell you why. First of all, their corporate anthem is ironic. Never ever, if you start a corporation or if you hire somebody to write a corporate anthem for your corporation, never tell them to be ironic about it. Hey, that's some serious business here. We have to motivate people and not like make fun about the company, okay? That doesn't work, okay? Uh, and actually, I think it's the first, it's the first known uh, uh, nerdcore rap. So nerdcore is really uh, like, uh, it's out there. Many people listen to nerdcore, yeah? And they like it. That was, I guess, maybe 1999, 2000, I don't know. But it's definitely nerdcore. Uh, it, it's a good song. Uh, it's really badly mastered. So you almost can't hear like a word they're singing, yeah? But it was ironic and therefore their company collapsed probably and at least they're British, okay. Uh, so let's uh, try to hear the song. Really important in the beginning you hear this is the sound of the stock market. If you have like a recorder, please record the stock market. You'll, you'll need it at home. Um, so let's try it. Algometrics. Algometrics, the optimal solution, our automated strategies are fully market neutral. <laughs> this is the sound of the stock market. The noise, there are correlations, expectations, simulations of situations that make you aware of it. Feeling the beat of the street as pairs of prices collide and provide digital signals to tell us when to buy and sell our pairs of shares. We don't care where the market moves. The optimal solution is market neutral. Bringing it to you with the algo crew. Algo metrics, the optimal solution. is fully market neutral. Drawing 3D graphics shading. We're the professionals, except for this, I'm 
Tatar City. We use generalized auto regressional conditional heteroscedacity. <laughs> Stop it, oh my god. I tell you, it goes on and on and on. And then finally it just stops. I mean, can you believe that? I mean, oh, I really like the conditional heteroscedacity. I mean, they're not fucking, it really exists. Actually, I don't know what market neutral means. I'm not in a business. What the fuck? It sounds cool. It's uh, like... Um, this part here of algometrics, it's almost like a, a children's song a little bit, but in between, it is really, really tough financial analyst speak that's even ironic, okay? Um, the fantastic city they're talking about, of course, is the stock market. So, like, if you have, like, a, an everyday rapper, uh, he is singing about, rapping about Compton or the Bronx or whatever. They are fucking talking about the fantastic city of the stock market. I mean, that's a really nasty place. Really, okay? I mean, my favorite line is here, or lines actually. It's friction free cash flow moving money from Tokyo to Oslo and NASDAQ and Kuwait and back again. We don't measure pain, we create higher gain. <laughs> ha ha ha. I mean, would you agree that it's nerdcore? <laughs> it is nerdcore. It is like early nerdcore, I would say. Ah, there's no bimbos or limos. It goes straight to your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get most of it, Ooh, but it's tough. Um, I mean, at least they, they somehow know what they're talking about because I guess they know what the topic of their company at least was. Uh, the next song is, uh, in German, we call it Schweinerock. So Schwein means pig, and rock, of course, means rock. So I'm not sure if it's butt rock. I played a song before, and uh, somebody like said, oh, pigs rock, Schweine rock sounds like butt rock. Maybe it's a butt rock song. But it's not a butt rock song. I think it's too, too bad for a butt rock song. Um, uh, it's from the Midwest. It is from a big, big state in the Midwest. Which state could it be? Big state. I think it's the biggest state in the United States of fucking America. <laughs> Texas, isn't it? It's not the Midwest. Oh, I'm so sorry. What is it? It's the Southwest. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, you have your own airline there. Oh, my. Okay, good. Okay, it's the fucking Southwest, and you get Chipotle there or whatever. Uh, not? Okay, it's from there. Okay. And I think I'm in a good mood. I'm in a fuck you all mood. I'm in a Chipotle mood, okay? And that's the good mood for Texas Instruments, okay? <laughs> Texas Instruments! Um, I have to get... I have to, yeah, good. Uh, so Texas Instruments has a really interesting Schweinerock approach to a corporate anthem. And uh, you see... Uh, it was, um, they formed their own bank to, to perform, a band to perform uh, the song. The band has a really stupid name called Band Pass, okay? Uh, and uh, it, it was led by um, singer and senior VP for sales and marketing, Jeff McCreary. Anybody knows Jeff McCreary? Is he still around there? Where is he? Did he move to Enron or so? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but you'll see, uh, I won't play a lot of the song because it's actually pretty bad, uh, really bad, but you'll get, you, you'll get the feeling. Said, we said it's real this time. Hot new products in the right marketplace. All businesses a challenge to pick Think up the pace. DSP and analog, it's hard to leave. Right. 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 execution and right. meeting the need. Some try to copy our story or bask in our glow. My earnings, my revenue, ready to grow. Stand up and do the guitar. 
Stand up, stand up, stand up! Yeah, okay, listen to the beat. Fast forward. Yeah. Fast try it, try it. Fast, Fast forward. Fast forward now! And of course, there is lots of guitar wanking, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, it's not worth waiting for the stupid lines. Yeah. Uh, technology entitlement, you do it with speed. Commitment, integrity, you care, you wait. I don't get it. Uh, but, yeah. Moving fast forward, baby, it's the idea, okay? So, uh, what this guy named McCreary is singing about is reality. He's always stressing, it's real this time. The dot-com world, it's real this time. I mean, even the corporation like uh, Texas Instruments, it's completely virtual nowadays. I mean, there's, it's completely virtual. There's nothing real. But there's this guy performing his stupid rock song standing there with both feet on the ground like some, I don't know, some Texas Ranger waiting to shoot, shoot some Mexicans, yeah? You know, he's standing there, it's real this time, it's real, we can do it, baby! Fucking virtual, it's fucking virtual capital, all out there, okay? There is nothing like reality in fucking capitalism, okay? Write it down, I'll make a test later. Um, so, no doubt we are moving. The question is in which direction. Um, and there's the guy with the cell phone one more time. It's such a nice graphic, I had to use it. So, there's a clear difference between something the song of Texas Instruments tries to tell the employees than, you know, the, the algorithmics, algorithmics um, hip-hop song. The last uh, uh, song for tonight and I'll actually play it, uh, the whole, I'll, I want to play the whole song because I really like it, it's a really nice tune and it's kind of sad. The next song is by a really big Japanese corporation called Fujitsu, okay? So Japan, of course, has a long tradition of corporate anthems, but not only Japan, as you heard today. Fujitsu always celebrated their birthday on the 12th of June. I don't know why, Maybe it was the birthday of the founder, whatever, 12th of June. My birthday is the 13th of June, so that's why I somehow like it. And they sent out PowerPoint files to all Fujitsu outlets on the planet with uh, translations, uh, with a MIDI file and translations of uh, the, the song's lyrics, because of course it was originally in Japanese. I have a copy of the English version of the song. It's a little bit strange. It's actually not badly translated, but you, you see it's a little bit quirky, okay? And uh, they are not singing it anymore. Uh, anyone wants to guess why they don't sing the song anymore? Any guess? Hey, you're all from the industry, hey. No, 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 it's not horribly sexist, but the Germans bought Fujitsu. Siemens bought Fujitsu, and of course, after Siemens bought Fujitsu, they said, hey, 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 hey. We stop with your stupid corporate anthem. Uh, I mean, we don't, we don't have one, but we don't want to hear yours, okay? So Germans don't sing. They start wars and stuff, they don't sing, okay? Um, and the Austrians too, of course. So the next song, nobody is singing the song anymore. And that's why I played the full song, and I want you to sing with me and with Fujitsu, the poor, poor corporation of Fujitsu. Eaten. It was eaten by the Germans. <laughs> so, let's go to the next song. And now you really have to feel it. And if you have lighters or matches, just put them out. I want to see... Or cell phones. Cell phones, yes. They're, they're glowing. Lad throwers. All them have lad throwers all the time. So, show them. For Fujitsu. And let's try to make a couple of um, improvisations. You see... Uh, the song lyrics are, they really invite you to make gestures, okay? So let's try that. Look 
can turn off my, vol my volume, I'm going down and sing with the crowd. Let's run out now to greener fields Where shines a splendid sun We have a dream, a wondrous dream That gets the best things done Our wide blue skies in our heart now Open us in our soul We'll run together going onwards now On towards our goal Our Fujitsu Oh, tomorrow is our goal Let's join our hands with everyone and smile at each new hour We have a dream An endless dream Of youthful love and power We want to use all our skill now All our strengths unfurl We plan uniting all our new techniques All the links all over the world. But now, now, let's make a bond. Okay. And now, get on your knees. <laughs> let's make a bond. From, From heart, to heart to heart. Throughout the human race. An unseen power now in our grasp it up. Can, can even, even conquer, conquer space. We want to find a new harmony, both in work and play. We'll share the fresh things we discover now, building a new day. the joy with every new day <laughs> Thanks <laughs> oh. oh well I'm exhausted I'm Austrian I have a strange jet lag but somehow I feel that I got my message across um, <laughs> and 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 because I'm sweating like a pig uh, there is a possibility for an encore Should it be? so it's a special kind of encore because we at monochrome have thought of a nice song that could be the corporate anthem of the HOPE conference. <laughs> because we're working together, there are so many people from so many different countries here. Austria, Australia, Canada, <laughs> Tahiti, um, Haiti, California. Um, okay, so we thought of uh, singing a song about networking, okay? Um, it's a song called Let's Network It Out, okay? <laughs> it's, uh, by the way, it's on our monochrome CD. It was funded by the Austrian government, but not all of it, so you can actually buy it and save our souls. Or you can buy it on iTunes and damn your souls. Um, uh, so, uh, it's a song, oh, I have to go to number 12. So it's actually the song you'll hear, it's not, it's, we're not doing karaoke here, so you'll see, you'll hear my good friend Richard sing the song, but I'll project the lyrics and we'll try to sing it together, okay? 
We will try it? Okay. Yes, number 12, play. So. Hey, come on. Come on. Meeting people all across the universe. Give them a smile, give them a try. Go for a ride on Blue Planet Earth. You can be high as the sky. Let's network it out. Let's network it out. I can network it out. Let's network. Pretty slacky. Give peace a chance. Give peace a dance. Put love on your lips to do. Let's have a party, post communist party. Let's all be good, nice and true. Let's network it out. Let's network it out. Okay, together. We can network it out. Can I have your business card? Later, business card later. Let's network it out. Let's network it out. We can network it out. Ah, let's reach for. Let's reach for future. Oh, sorry. I know, I know it sounds kish. Let's dance. Let's dance. Let's dance. Let's give to the poor. Let's take from the rich. Like that guy? Make friends. Make friends. Make friends. Let's network it out. Let's network it out. We can network it out. So please get up. Let's network it out. Let's network it out. We should network it out. We shall network it out. We should not work in it now. Oh, uh, oh uh, whatever. Ah, that's my name. That's my email address. That's my stupid Twitter account. Uh, so Anna, keep standing because you have to go out. It's the last talk. <laughs> Fuck off. Go, go. Good night! <laughs>